Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a setup makeover. Episode 1 is just going to be me building a new PC. And as you can see, there's no PC here. I already got rid of the first one. It just used to be right over in that corner. And we're going to build a new one. Alright, let's just get started with all the parts we're going to be using in today's build. So we got a B450M motherboard going to be using pairing that with the Ryzen 5 3600 and for the graphics card of choice it's going to be a MSI 1660 Super paired with some uh, Corsair RGB RAM going to have a 500 gigabyte SSD terabyte hard drive and a 450 watt power supply. For any extras we're gonna need for the build, got some zip ties, two Phillips head screwdrivers, can't forget the thermal paste. And then also for the case, it's gonna be a Cooler Master Master Box. All right, let's just get started with the motherboard. Unbox it. Comes in this anti-static bag. Comes with some SATA cables. Be using those for the drives. An IO shield just in the back of it. Go ahead, set your motherboard right on top of the motherboard box. Take this little arm right here. Pull it up. And take your CPU and it has a gold triangle right there on the bottom left. Insert the CPU into the CPU socket. Line it up with the triangle right there. Don't press it down, it should just fall into place. And just bring this arm down. I'm gonna be using the stock AMD heat sink. We're gonna have to remove these brackets right here, which is the Phillips head screwdriver. All right, so before you put the stock heat sink on, can't forget your thermal paste. So just apply a small pea size amount in the center of the CPU. That should be plenty. Line the CPU heat sink up with the AMD lettering facing towards the left. And just plug that into the CPU fan header right there on the motherboard. All right, when you screw it in, screw it in diagonally across from each other so it screws in evenly. Start with your RAM. So we got 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. All right, so since we got two sticks of RAM, we put it in slots two and four. So just take these clips, should open up just like that. Then you see this notch here on the on the RAM stick? Line it up with the notches right there in the motherboard. Set it in there. Click it into place and you should hear it click. Cool. So now we got our motherboard ready to be installed into the case. So we've got our case here. Pretty nice case. It's a micro ATX case. Comes with two ARGB fans in the front. Tempered glass. And also in the back, should have your accessories bag. You can provide a little snack for you. Get your case laid down. And before installing your motherboard, make sure all the points in the motherboard have standoffs and installed into the case. So we have one, two, 
three, four, five, and six points on our motherboard. All the standoffs look like they're already pre-installed. They're all right and now in there. So after you get your IO shield installed, you're ready to install your motherboard. So just take it in at a slant, line it up, and it should just drop right into place. Don't drop it though. And then where all those standoffs were, just screw them into place. The screws will be inside your accessory bag. Next up, get the power supply in. We got a 450 watt power supply here. All right, so you'll install the power supply with the fan facing down. Slide that just right in there. Should line up the back and you'll screw it down on the back of the case there's some holes to screw the power supply down with also the screws are included in the same accessory bag getting the last screw installed all right nice power supply should be going nowhere Next, we start hooking all the cables up. Case cables and power supply cables. Let's start with the case cables first. Take these. You can just wrap them right through the bottom here. USB 3.0 front panel connectors, etc. So we got HD audio. Plugs in all the way over here. Reroute it so it fits in better. Should just plug right in. We'll do the USB 3.0 last. All right. So we got our front panel connectors. Reset switch, hard drive LED, power switch, etc. So those just plug in right down in there. You can refer to your motherboard manual to look where they go or you can look closely down at under it tells you exactly where they plug into all right so after you get your front panel connectors plugged in then you can do the usb 3.0 it's should be just right next to it this big fat cable all right so now you have all your front panel connectors plugged in hd audio usb 3.0 power switch led etc now you can get your 24 pin and your CPU. As a clip here, and it should clip into the motherboard. You'll hear it click. It takes a bit of pressure. CPU connector has a clip on it. Sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing, but it should just click right into place. There's that click. Pull that through. And all your cables are done for now until we get the graphics card in and all the drives and stuff. Now we can get started and get the graphics card put in. All right, let's unbox this thing. So this also comes in an anti-static bag. Card looks really solid. Has a nice like 
brushed aluminum backplate, I'm guessing. Make sure to remove that. <laughs> so if you just line it up, you'll see what brackets you'll have to remove. Looks like we're gonna have to remove second and third ones. These little thingies. Make sure this little arm right here is open on the PCIe slot. Line it up and just push it and clip it into place. And you'll have to screw it right there or it'll slouch. So it'll hold it in place. Alright, so the next cable we need is this 8 pin PCIe connector. We can route that from the back through one of these cable routing holes for cable management. Just route it through the bottom one. And you'll have to connect it like that. This one also has a clip right there. Should just clip right in. And you can just pull it through the back. Looks pretty clean. Next is to get these drives installed. So in the accessories bag, they come with these little clips and you clip onto your side of the hard drive and it slides into the hard drive cage. Pretty simple and for SSDs they have these little things that just go into these holes and then you just push your SSD into it and it holds it. No screws really needed. It's pretty simple. Only screws needed are these tiny little screws I'm going to the back of the SSDs and that enables you to just be able to push it right into those holes into those little rubber grommets they gave you so it should look something like that just line it up and then push it into place and it holds it there pretty sturdy then you got your hard drive down here and we just have, just have to plug in these SATA cables and SATA power cables and SATA data cables. So these SATA cables come included in the motherboard box. Comes with two of them, so that's perfect. We got two drives. Plug it into your SSD here. And then this side, plug into the motherboard. So I ended up having to uninstall the graphics card to reach the SATA data ports. Can't really see them, but they're just right under the graphics card. Now all we have to do is plug in SATA power cables from the power supply. Which are just these. Final step is just cable management. Here's the before. Don't really have a tripod right now, so I will just put the camera down and I'll show you guys the after. And there's the after. So we use a couple zip ties and zip tied them to the tie down points they had. I think overall, it's an alright job. We stuffed a bunch underneath the power supply shroud area down there. But it looks good. Turn it around to the front. And there's a shot of inside of it. So let's get this powered up and let's see it. All right, so I got it all set back up again. Let's do a first boot. Flip the power switch on. Get anything to the screen. Here we go.
Alright guys, well thanks for watching. And uh tune in for some more videos. Ep episode two will probably be me building a better desk here. I can do some benchmarking on this PC for you. Also play some games on this channel.